Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna show you how to set up one of the best PlayStation 1 emulators for Android known as DuckStation. Recently, I did a full video tutorial showing you how to set this up with Windows. And since then, I've had a lot of people asking about the Android version. So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. Now, DuckStation is an amazing PlayStation 1 emulator. They offer a standalone app that you can download for free from the Google Play Store, or you can use the RetroArch Core. In this video, we're going to be going over the standalone app, and one of my favorite features about DuckStation is the internal upscaling. Now, what you're seeing on screen right now is the arcade mode of Gran Turismo 2 upscaled to 1080p. This is the Samsung Galaxy S6 tablet, it does have that Snapdragon 855, but you don't need this much power to run most games at 720 or 1080p. Even with this setup here, I can't run Bloody Roar 2 at 1080p, I do have to drop it down to 720 or I'll get some lag in it. Now in my opinion, this game looks great at 1080p, but it's really hard to tell the difference unless I do a side by side. So here it is, and it makes a world of difference upscaling these games. Now some games do look better than others. When I upscale, let's say Tekken 3, it doesn't look as good as when I'm upscaling Gran Turismo 2, but as you can see, this makes a big difference. On the left hand side, we're at 1x resolution. On the right hand side, we're upscaled to 1080p. I mean, the car details, the road, we can even read the text on the banner in the background there when we're upscaled. So if you're interested in getting your PlayStation 1 games looking like this on your Android device, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we are with the tablet. I've just plugged into my game capture to make it a little easier on the eyes. Before we really get started here, there's a couple things we'll need. First up, I recommend getting a file manager application. You can download one from the Google Play Store, but most devices do have them pre-installed. This is the stock Samsung file manager called My Files. And inside of here, I've taken my games from my PC and I've actually transferred them over. Now this is definitely a very important part about getting the DuckStation emulator up and running. You will need some games and a PS1 BIOS. Unfortunately, I can't link you to them. I can't tell you where to get them. I would recommend ripping your own from your own discs but you can do a quick Google search and you'll be able to find everything you need. So in my file manager, I've just placed these on my internal storage. You can also place them on an SD card if your phone or tablet supports it. But I'm gonna to go to my internal storage and I've just placed them in my downloads folder in a folder called Sony PlayStation. I've also created another folder inside of here for my BIOS. So this is the BIOS we're gonna need for DuckStation to work properly. It's called scph1001.bin, basic PlayStation 1 BIOS. We'll back up, and here's my games. Now, unfortunately, as I'm making this video, DuckStation does not support PBP files, so we're gonna kinda be stuck with bin and Q files. But like I mentioned, they're actually easy to obtain. If you have some PlayStation 1 games laying around, you can actually rip them very easily from your PC, or you can just do a quick Google search. So I've got a few here, bin and Q. Now, DuckStation is going to be reading from the bin file itself. I've got Bloody Roar 2, Crash Bandicoot, Gran Turismo, Resident Evil, Tekken 3, Wipeout 3. But when it comes down to it, I mean, you can add as many as you'd like. So now that we've got that out of the way, it's time to download the DuckStation emulator. We're just going to head over to the Google Play Store. This is free to download. We're just going to search for DuckStation. We're going to install it here. Give it a second to download. And it's now installed. So we'll go ahead and find it here, DuckStation. Let's launch it for the first time. We will have to allow access to storage, so we're just gonna choose allow. And now it's time to set the emulator up. If you don't have a BIOS or games, you're not even gonna be able to use this, so I would recommend getting those first. So it's a very basic looking screen down here. We have a play button. Over here, we have a plus button, our settings, and a little drop down menu here. So the first thing I wanna do is set up my BIOS and my games directory. So I'm gonna go down here to the little plus icon. We're gonna choose this, and we need to allow access to internal storage. So I'm actually gonna go up to these three little dots here. You can hide internal storage, but we wanna show internal storage, make sure that is checked. Over with the three little lines in the top left-hand corner, Galaxy tab, my BIOS and games are located in my downloads folder, inside of another folder called PlayStation, so I'm gonna go right here, allow access to Sony PlayStation. This is just what I named my folder. We're gonna allow it to scan and it scanned my games. Now for some reason, just like the Windows version, I can get all of my games to show up in this list here, but the games do work and I can load them individually if I want to. 
So we've got our games imported, but if I go to play a game right now, it's going to give me a warning about my BIOS. We can actually import the BIOS right now by choosing yes, or we can go up to the three little dots here, more options, import BIOS, and it's going to bring us right back into our file manager. So mine's located on my internal storage, under my downloads folder, Sony PlayStation, BIOS. I've just set it up like this to make it easier to find. It's the scph1001.bin. So I'll just double click that, and it's now imported. We can actually start playing our games. If I go to play Gran Turismo 2 right now, it's going to start up. We have on-screen controls, but I'm going to show you how to set up a controller. If you don't have a controller and you're using a tablet or phone, you can use these if you want to, no problem at all. I'm also going to show you how to skip that PlayStation screen. So we're actually going to close this down. I just want to go to quit, back into Duck Station, and now it's time for a little tweaking to get our games looking better. So up here under settings, we do have a lot to mess around with. General, display, audio, enhancements, controllers, advanced. I usually mess around with general, enhancements, and controllers. So starting from general, I'm going to scroll to the bottom here, and my GPU renderer is set to OpenGL. Some might work better with Vulkan, but I find that the Snapdragon 855 works really well with OpenGL. So I'm going to leave it here. Now we can move on to display. Now if you take a look at each one of these, it gives you a little brief summary on what it does. Basically, aspect ratio. A lot of people complain about the black bars on the side, but that's how these games were meant to play. We're playing on 16x9 or 16x10 screens, and these were meant to be played at 4x3, so there are going to be black bars on the side. But you can change it from here if you want to. Unfortunately, it might stretch out some of the games, so I usually just leave it at 4x3, the way that PlayStation 1 was meant to be played. Under Enhancements, this is where we can get our games looking really, really good. Resolution Scale. It's set to 1x, the stock resolution of the PlayStation 1. That's pretty low for being 2020. We can go all the way up to 16x. For this tablet here, I usually choose 5x, but I can go to 1440p if I want to at 6x. 1080p. And this is really going to depend on how powerful your device is. If you're lagging at 1080p, drop it down a couple. But even going from 1x to 3x, which is 720p, makes a huge difference with these PlayStation 1 games. Next thing, fast boot. I like turning this off so I don't get that BIOS boot screen. It'll bring me into the game a lot faster. Multi-sampling. I go to 2x MSAA. Again, if you start lagging, make sure you drop this back down. For this tablet here with the Snapdragon 855, 2x to 4x is fine, but I don't notice much of a difference between the two. We'll go to 2 here. And finally, texture filtering. This is set to nearest neighbor. Now, I personally like XBR on a Windows machine that's more powerful, but unfortunately at 1080p with XBR on, even with the Snapdragon CPU, it lags a bit. So I go to Bilinear. I think this is the next best thing. So we're going to go to Bilinear, and that's about it for the enhancements. You can go through this and test and tune as much as you'd like. Last thing here, controllers. So when I connect my controllers to my Android device, I like to use X input mode. If you have an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth, it's going to automatically detect it. Or if your controller just works in X input, like the 8 bit controllers and things like that, they're going to work fine right out of the box. But there is one thing we can change here. Controller type. Digital controller for a gamepad or a D-pad, or analog controller for your DualShock. I personally prefer using DualShock, but you can experiment with this also. So I'm set to analog here. And the last little tweak I usually do, auto-hide touchscreen controls because I'm using a controller. So I make sure this is enabled. When I have a controller attached, it's going to hide those on-screen controls so they don't get in my way. If you don't have a controller, I would recommend leaving this on just so they're on-screen all the time and you can play with those touch controls. And now we can start playing our favorite PlayStation games on our Android device, upscaled with some filtering. Now, like I said, all of the games that I have in my folder aren't showing up here for some reason. There's something I just can't figure out here with the bin and cues not showing up correctly. But if I do want to just choose a game manually, I'll go up to more options, start file, and I'll find my games. So if I want to do Bloody Roar 2, which isn't showing up, I'm just going to choose my bin file here. 
and it's going to load the game right up for me. Now, this is a harder to emulate game for PlayStation 1 emulators. So even on the Snapdragon 855, I do have to take it down from 1080 to 720 to get full speed out of this one. So I've taken this one down to 720p just to get full speed out of it. And this is the only game I've run into issues with on the Snapdragon 855. Everything else that I've tested can run at 1080p and even 1440 on this machine, but this one has always given PlayStation 1 emulators a run for its money. Now I'm going to give you a real-time scaling demo here. We're going to go back down to 1x. Now take a look at the edges on the legs, the floor, and the back fence. This is at 1x, we're going to take it back up to 720p, and it is a dramatic difference. And here it is at 720p. As you can see, all those little jaggies are gone on her leg. We can actually see the back fence, the floors cleaned up, and this is one of the main reasons I love the Duck Station emulator. And real quick, here's a side-by-side -side comparison. On the left, we're at 1x resolution. On the right, we're at 3x. I mean, even the text up top is barely legible at 1x. But when we bump it up to 720p, everything is super clean. So yeah, overall, Duck Station is definitely easy to set up on any platform, really. It is compatible with Android, Windows, Linux, and even Mac OS with an experimental build. There's also a core inside of RetroArch, but personally, I like sticking with the standalone version on whatever system I'm running this on. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching and hope you get Duck Station set up on your Android device. It's definitely one to try out if you're into PlayStation 1 emulation. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.